you've probably thought that mining in a sidewinder is a terrible idea. I'm going to show you why it's not such a bad idea. Greetings commanders, I am Cree Cree. I am an elite dangerous YouTuber and streamer. Speaking of, catch me live on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Cree I'm live from 1pm Thursday to Saturdays, Australian Eastern Standard Time. In today's video I'm going to show you why mining in a Sidewinder isn't such a bad idea and how, yes, you can make millions. I'll show you the build, our priority and share some tips at the end, so stick around. Okay, so now let's just start off with the build. So what I'm going to put into the hard points is just two 1D mining lasers. There we go, excellent. What we'll need in our utility mounts. Now this thing is optional because we are running without shields. So if it helps you feel a bit more secure, then you can get a point defense turret. Get uh, two of these. Okay, there we go. That's just in case that there are any pirates out. So that way we can uh, defend ourselves. To core internals. Now in here, uh, we'll keep with the regular lightweight alloys. Power plant, uh, we will have that as a 2D power plant. 2D for the thrusters as well. The frame shift drive or FSD at 2A to help increase our jump range. Keep our life support at 1D. Power distributor, we will have that as a 1A. Change, there we go. Sensors, we will have at a 1D. And the fuel tank, we can't really change because or they're all rated C. It just depends on the uh, class that this is for. And for the Sidewinder, it is uh, a one class. Moving on to the optional internals. Okay, so now uh, I did have a 2A fuel scoop. This was for my exploration Sidewinder build, but we'll be moving that to a, uh, a 1A fuel scoop. Okay, and for the top two spot, I'm going to put in a refinery. This is for the materials that you'll be mining for. So I will make that a 2A. Oh, no, I can't. I'll be making that a 2B, simply because I'm not able to afford 2A at this point. Okay, now I'm going to get collection limpets. For that, I will have a 1A. I'll also need prospecting limpets as well. For that, I'll get 1A, which is the same as the collection limpets. Okay, so now for this build I'm going to get rid of my advanced docking computer and replace that with some cargo for the materials that we're going to be collecting. For the cargo racks I will be in uh, 2E, that way we have 4 tons of capacity. Okay, now so just as a recap, hard points, we have two 1D mining lasers. Utility mounts, two point defense turrets at the rear of the ship. Four internals, 1C lightweight alloy, which is uh, standard for this. 2D power plant, 2D thrusters, 2A frame shift drive, 1D life support, 1A power distributor, 1D sensors, and the standard 1C fuel tank. Now for the optional internal, I would recommend having 2A refinery, but because I'm not able to afford it at this time, I have to go on with 2B. For the second 2 slot, I've gone with 2E cargo rack, uh, which is probably one of the most important things to have, because otherwise with the materials that you mine, you're not going to have anywhere to put them, so definitely need that. Want a fuel scoop just to help you uh, on your travels to the places you need to go to mine. Want a collect and limpet controller. Need a detailed surface scanner so you can scan the rings of planets. Want a prospector limpet 
that way that the prospector can scan these asteroids and tell you what percentage of what material is in them. And then of course, so I have horizons now, there is the planetary approach suite. Okay, now that is done. They will tell you that you need to set your fire groups, which we will do now. Now, because you're mining, you won't need any data link or compos uh, composition scanners, so you can leave those blank. For the miners, I'll put them both on the uh, one, so that that way they both fire when I press the one button. But the prospector and collect Olympic controllers on one and two, my first and secondary fire buttons. Now, as for the discovery scanner and the detailed surface scanner, I'll put them on one and two as well. Okay, so that's your fire groups done. The next thing that you want to do is make sure that your power priority is set up. So for that, for the thrusters, I would put that as priority one. Cargo hatch, priority two. Mining lasers, priority two. The power distributor, uh, priority one. Life support, priority three. Refinery, I'll put this as a priority two. The fuel scoop, I will put that as a priority four. Collector Olympic controller, I will put that as two. Frame shift drive, one. Prospector Olympic controller, that is two as well. Point defense turret is one. And the sensors, I will put that as one. And you'll notice that there is no priority for the others because you can see in the power, the percentage that it uses is zero. So I'm sure you've noticed that there is a uh, a reason for the priority numbers you basically have the things that are going to be on all the time as one and then number two for things that you'll be uh, using uh, second to that and then so on and so forth now to speak about those tips I mentioned earlier but first I'd like to say if this video has helped you then consider subscribing hitting that bell icon and giving this video a like these things are free and it'll help me out a lot and on to the tips one find a good place to mine is easy just use the miners tool which is edtools.cc forward slash miner so this is the miners tool now th is, this website is very easy to use uh, as you can see here where it says i am in that is obviously your reference system you can click on the commodity that you would like to mine for and then down here it will tell you about um, the reference distance, the cell system, the cell port, the price, the demand which is very important and uh, when this was last updated. So for example if we were to go to low temperature diamonds Okay, so it tells us where the LTD um, hotspots that overlap. So it tells you the distance, hotspot system, the planet and ring. Uh, it also tells you the closest selling point, what port it is, what the prices are, when it was last updated, and what the light years is. So this is a very handy tool to use when you're uh, searching for something to mine depending on the prices of things and the demands at this point in time. Another cool website that you can use is Inara in the commodities section. Now this you can use for trade in general but um, you can also use it for the mining. So if you go down to things like uh, metals and uh, minerals you can see the different types of things that you can mine for you can see the average sell price the average buy price the average profit max sell minimum buy if you were interested to buy that is and what the max profit would be that's another website that is handy to use okay so now i've put in my reference system as ltt9104 and Paynite is probably the best thing that we could probably go for mostly because Paynite is easiest to get through laser mining which is what we've outfitted our ship for so we're going to go somewhere there 
Okay, let's go check out this hotspot. I've been here before. GCRV1568. Okay, so it's 156.42 light years away. Let's see how many jumps that'll take us. Okay, so just copy and paste the name in there. And there we go. Okay, now I'm just going to make sure that I've got fuelable stars on the way. Yes, I do. Okay, how many jumps is that? 11. Okay, that's not bad. We can do that. That's totally fine. All right, excellent. Here we go. Okay, so now that we've made it to our destination. Okay, now on the website, it said what planet and what ring I should go to. So it says that I should go to AB1, ring A. All right, so let's have a look in the system map. AB1, there it is. I guess, all right. Let's go. Okay, so now what we're going to do is that we're just going to use that surface scanner that we put into our build so that we can scan these rings here. So, I'm going to get close enough to the planet so that on the left hand side where it says surface scanner, it'll tell you whether you're going too fast or if you're too far away. Alright, let's go. Go down. Okay, do that ring and that ring. Now with your pips I'd suggest putting them all into weapons. That way that um, if I show you when it's all balanced. It heats up a bit too fast. So it's best to have them uh, all into weapons.
correct hard points get into super cruise and now let's check that website to see where is the selling station closest selling point is Bingeal. hey so that is 103 light years away not bad so now because we are full yeah, it's gonna take eight jumps Okay, so I have 130,700 credits. Okay, let's see. I think that is not bad. Making a profit of I'd say 1.5 million credits profit just from this little sidewinder. I realize that Pena used to be a lot more profitable, but it's still fairly profitable, especially if you're just getting started with mining. So having your profits go into the millions pretty quickly with just one trip and doing that a few times, you can get your ideal ship in no time. With this build and the tips we've talked about, sure to help you out without doubt in my mind. It'll help you mine the way to riches for sure. Once again, subscribe if it has helped you. Check out my other Elite Dangerous videos with more to come each week. I'll see you in the Black Commander.